to, to, to really become complacent and say COVID-19 has left us. We still get infections, they fluctuate, today it's under 1,000, the next day it's close to 2,000. So which means the virus is not on level one. It's still there around us and should continue to take all the necessary safety measures. And I must say to the center manager, I'm really impressed that you really stuck to all the necessary protocols that we have, that have been put in place. So the head of the World Organization has stressed, we have to do everything in our power, both as individuals and as a government, to prevent the resurgence of this deadly pandemic. Program director, we have to realize that as a society, we must learn to coexist with the virus. Our best re response remains than pharmaceutical measures such as always wearing masks for it correctly and using other methods because there's no vaccine. This informed our novel hard national lockdown, followed by risk adjustment strategies and we want to continue to ask our people to be cautious so that we should see even more declines in the number of infections because it's still really uncertain. As I say, the other day it's under 1,000, the next thing it comes back, it's 1,800. So we really appeal to our people to continue to be vigilant. Because despite the good news that we have reached, that we have reached now, we remain at risk. The virus is, on, is not on level two or level one. So our task is to mobilize, continue to mobilize our society for the behavioral change needed as we ramp up these non-pharmaceutical interventions as a way to coexist with the virus. Let's take this opportunity to urge all our teachers to download the WhatsApp connection platform that we did launch last month. This tool, the WhatsApp Teacher Connect, is a real-time chart-based COVID-19 self-assessment, learning and mentoring platform for the entire school community, which means teachers, learners, parents, and the admin staff. We also, it also affords users the ability to connect, be a help desk, provide learning, mentoring, and tracking through real-time dashboards. As government, we remain steadfast in our belief that there is a need to balance saving lives versus livelihood. Yet saving lives takes priority and we have both the moral and the constitutional obligation to save lives first and foremost. So Program Director, the 2020 World Teachers Day marks the 72nd anniversary of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights in 1949. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights recognizes education as a key fundamental right and establish, establishes an entitlement to free compulsory education, ensuring inclusive and equitable access to all children. I'm honored to speak today as we celebrate the light holders of society, as we celebrate the teaching profession. We have a responsibility to take stock of our achievements at the, at the same time, we must pause and reflect on some of the binding constraints that prevent us from keeping some of the brightest minds and young talents in the profession. Nonetheless, as a country, we are proud of the caliber of our teachers that we have in our system. Thanks for, for staying first in South Africa and secondly in the public schooling system. We are aware that teachers work in unfavorable conditions generated by environmental factors such as the prevalence of crime, poverty, and burden of diseases. Yet, your experience and qualifications are in demand beyond our borders. Thank you for staying, and we really honor you for that. It sounds like a glitch when we say teachers are indispensable to the system. Moreover, teachers are critical in our efforts to steer our country back into the critical growth path after the years of inertia, state capture, and general malfeasance. Without the more than 400,000 teachers in the payroll of the state, serving more than 12 million learners, the system would collapse. It is reality that teachers are and will remain the heartbeat of any basic education system in the world. 
and we salute them for that. Your country is indeed proud of you and your exploits. As a country, you must do more to show appreciation to our teachers. Our teachers deserve extra support through both monetary and non-monetary measures for their, tenacity, for their tenacity, expertise, and staying power. Some education researchers that are yet to develop a compulsive perpetual negative narrative about our sector, they have described our, our system as better resourced and low pupil teacher and, 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 and ratios and they are better qualified compared to most systems. Furthermore, education economists do say that 3% of the economically active population in our country are teachers in the public system. Program director, over the years, the falsehood have been told about our teachers. Lies and half-truths have been repeated so often that they have grown three legs. In other ways, falsehoods and scarecrows sustain the notion of the so-called education crisis in South Africa. Indeed, there are challenges in the country, we can't deny that, but we also don't think we are in a crisis mode. Let's deal with all the myths that South African teachers are qualified and there's nothing le less truthful than that. We have greatly improved the quality of, the, of our teachers. In 1994, only 54% of our teachers were academically qualified. But today, over 400,000 of our teachers a statistically insignificant number is still completing their qualification. So the majority of our teachers have improved their qualifications. The system has attracted young, qualified, energetic young people, which has improved the system quite greatly. So according to the Center for Development and Enterprise report of 2015, it produced some noteworthy, surprising findings of the current teaching force that, for instance, the, the Center for Development Studies database says of the 400,000 teachers, that of the four of the more than 400 uh, uh, South African teachers who were South African citizens between 22 and 65, it produced the following profile: that 81 percent of these teachers were qualified, 66 percent of these highly qualified had M plus three and the remaining had M plus four, so which is a big, big improvement from where we were. 19, 19%, only 19% remains unqualified, but it's not people who don't have the necessary content knowledge to be university graduates who don't have a teacher qualification, who are busy on the teacher qualification. In 2013, we had 10% of teachers with an equivalent of M plus 3. But now we're saying more than 60% of them have M plus 3 and 15% is M plus 4. Just to show that our teachers themselves are lifelong learners, they've improved their qualifications over the years and the trend continues over the years. This chart suggests that the majority of our teachers build up their qualifications on the job, often over many years. In fact, by 2017, the number of unqualified teachers was less than 5,000, including the underqualified teacher cohort. Interestingly, program director, nationally, the supply of newly qualified teachers has almost tripled over the five years to 2017. It grew from 5,939 in 2008 to more than 25,877 in 2017. As a result, the Center for Development report concluded that if the number of graduates continue to increase, South Africa will be, a, will be able to produce sufficient teachers, sufficient teachers for the next decade from 2015 to 2025. So the old crisis that we don't have teachers has passed. Actually, we are now challenged about placing our learners in schools. That report says that new teachers will maintain the current learner educator ratio this is, of course, as a result of the growing of our timber through the funds of struggle. So I see the director here that it really has assisted us a lot in ensuring that we grow our own timber and we are able to produce the teachers that we want. Since its inception, the funds of Shaga in 2017 to 2018, we have awarded 
more than 134,000 Funza Lushaka bursaries. This number excludes thousands of funded through the NS fund, not to mention those who have been paid for by parents and any other resources in the country, including the EGTP center that has also assisted us in providing bursaries for, as for aspirant young people who want to take teaching as a profession. So program director, I'm, I'm very happy to announce that we are currently finalizing analysis of teacher supply, demand and utilization in the sector. After the study, we will provide a comprehensive report to the Council for Education Ministers. We are also in the process of reprioritizing the Funza Lusaka Bazaar priority areas, and this is, a, this is a response to the emerging areas of specialization occasioned by, amongst others, the fourth industrial revolution and policy imperatives. For teachers already in employment, opportunity to diversify their teaching offerings is also abound. In this, for instance, in 2019 alone, we offered computer skills to more than 43,000 teachers. In the same year, we enrolled more than 72,000 teachers in coding pedagogy in one of the prestigious and largest universities on this continent, the University of South Africa. As you know, coding as a subject is piloted in several schools in the country. Our partners include giants such as, as Google, your team gigs and other businesses that are also supporting us to develop a coding platform that uses artificial intelligence and machines learning to customize teaching and learning. As you already know, plans are afoot to introduce a robotic curriculum from grade R to 9, and this curriculum will ensure that our schooling system produces learners with foundation for future work and equip them with skills for the changing world. Centuries ago, People who could read and write were in a position of power and controlled both present and the future. But now, when our world relies on technology, people with tech-related skills have more options to be successful and shape their future instead of being passive consumers of technology. Our thinking is that our funding for new student teachers should be in line with emerging priorities such as the need for qualified ECD practitioners in anticipation of the revamp ECD sector, digital learning, focus schools, and the three stream model curricula. Obviously, certain areas need improvements such as lower rate of women leaders in education. According to the Teaching and Learning International Survey Tallis 2018, teachers of South Africa were female which compared reasonably well with, organized econ with economic cooperation development average of 68%. However, Talis also indicated that only 22% of those teachers are in principals, of those female teachers are principal. This is less than half of what the OCD world showed. So our policy on South African stand for principalship will play an essential role in guiding the selection process and capacity building program for principals, in particular, the principal women. Besides, we have launched a unique qualification for principalship, namely the advanced diploma in education, school leadership, which in the future will form part of the criteria for anybody aspiring to be a principal. We are encouraged that women teachers are taking up the space and are prepared to lead, uh, like. Mayhilda is leading the entire pack in the country. So we're very encouraged when women really take up the leadership because we do want to see more young women, more women in leadership position because the time is today. And I want to take this opportunity again, program director, to thank you for the opportunity and say to our teachers, we honor them, we appreciate them, we value them because thank you very much. Thank you, Minister, and we want to thank you for taking time to be part of this event. We are aware that you had other competing uh, events in your diary, and I think uh, we need to indicate that while some at the peak of the virus had indicated that 
We should abandon school. Minister of Basic Education there, Angie Mutaka. Just some highlights of what she spoke about. She's speaking, well, uh, some of the notes I took away from that. Since 1994, she says, only 64% were of teachers were uh, educationally qualified. Now, more than 400,000 of those have been qualified. 81% are qualified teachers, 63% uh, are highly qualified, and 19% of those remain underqualified, as she says. In 2013, she says 10% of teachers had an M plus three minimum postgraduate teacher qualification. That, of course, means three years of, uh, of, of, of teacher diplomas and other national qualification certificates. And she says that uh, with 15% of M plus four teachers will meet that qualification standard, they've gone to a point where they have sufficient number of teachers for the next decade or so, saying by 2025, they will have start having headaches on where to actually start putting in those teachers because they got a huge number of teachers qualifying through the schools. Good for South Africa, good for our students out there, and good for all of us in the country as we build the future. We honor them, she says. We appreciate them. We are what we are because of you, is what she said. Now remember, do give us a call. Have a chat with us right here on SABC News Channel for the agenda. Bottom of the screen is 078-799-4480. Speak to us, your memories of your teacher. Speak to us on anything you'd like to have a chat with us. The question you've been asking, how did the teacher mold you? How did your teacher impact your life? Send us your comments also at the uh, agenda. souls of our fallen heroes and heroines rest in peace and we shall not forget the sacrifices that they've made as we attempt to ensure that we complete the task that they've not been able to complete it before their passing.
So thank you. We will ensure that their memory lives on in the work we do. Uh, we now have an item which is a Shanghai dance by the Tukulakani Primary School. You can come forward please.
this is the future of our nation, also pride of the nation. And I think uh, at Tukurkani Primary School, we also need to thank the teachers, and we should we should know well that uh, our learners are in good hands. Uh, thank you, Minister. The Minister will be doing an interview. We will proceed. Uh, just to, yeah, before we move on, we also need to share some other news that uh, the Central Foundation, while they're not here with us today, uh, they have been uh, listed among the top 10 finalists in terms of uh, the UNESCO Hamden Ben Rashid Al Maktoum Prize for outstanding practice and performance in enhancing the effectiveness of teachers. So today, this afternoon, uh, in the UNESCO event from 1300 to 1530 uh, will be held, and they are among the top 10 finalists, and hopefully we wish them all the best, and that they would uh, be chosen as uh, the winner in this competition, in the UNESCO Hamden Prize. So we now move on to uh, a message from SACE uh, presented by the CEO, Ms. Ella Mokulani. Uh, Ella. Director, to our Honorable Minister of Education, NG Mutsapa, our MECs and provincial HODs in absentia, even though they are watching live, our DG and senior managers in the DBE, uh, our district director, including the center manager, CEOs of public entities, and most importantly, our valued school and office-based educators. Greetings and happy World Teachers Day to you all. This year, we are honoring the teaching profession and all education personnel in times of COVID-19 pandemic. 2020 experienced the short and long-term ramifications of this unprecedented pandemic which left the entire education system and the teaching profession in particular in a crisis mode. Consequently, the pandemic transformed the education system with speed and left many educators wounded professionally. It left many wounded emotionally and of course personally. Amongst others, program director, educators were inevitably faced with disruptions in schools, they were faced with new demands, dynamics and complexities in workplaces, they experienced lack of responsiveness in addressing their emotional and mental health as well as their psychological needs. They moved away from brick and mortar and most of them worked remotely as well as online. They were exposed to the recurring inability, inequalities between impoverished and privileged schools in the country and inadequate support for change management. In, uh, this this COVID-19 brought a whole lot of changes in the country and obviously there was a need for support across the country in terms of how do we manage that particular change. As we continue to talk about the teaching profession's leadership in terms of COVID-19 pandemic crisis, we can also confirm that educators experience fear, they experience anxiety, they experience uh, frustrations and challenging working environment. Even more disturbing, as we've seen just now with the previous item, they experience deaths and, uh, of colleagues and loved ones in their families, but also in communities. Notwithstanding all these challenges and constraints that I've mentioned that were posed by COVID-19 pandemic crisis, the teaching profession and educators alike showed multifaceted and foresight leadership that deserves to be applauded by all of us. Also, COVID-19 pandemic tested the educators' flexibility 
and willingness to change. They undoubtedly rose to the challenge and led by ensuring that against all odds, uh, they transition to alternative forms of teaching and learning. And I think we've seen that across the country. They managed to implement strategies and plans for curriculum recovery. They managed to administer COVID-19 compliance requirements and ensured that our matriculants are supported and they assisted a lot in terms of extra support lessons and tuition that was offered in different strategies and approaches throughout the country. It is through our esteemed educators' selflessness and also their underlying commitment and dedication that they deliberately chose servant food. They chose leadership uh, at, the, at the professions, national, provincial, district, and school levels by putting the interests of this country's children first, despite the trying COVID-19 circumstances at the whole face of the teaching profession. It is for this reason and many others that in 2020, we are globally and locally celebrating World Teachers Day on this 5th of October under the theme, uh, Teachers Leading in Crisis, Reimagining the Future. And therefore, as we reimagine the future, the question for all of us is, are we even prepared for the possible second wave of the pandemic or worse? future pandemics that are wicked, that are uncertain, that are also complex to manage? And how do we collectively ensure that our educators are not left on their own for emotional and psychological support? Again, are we re as we reimagine the future, we should develop support and empower our educators continuously to ensure more resilience, to ensure that they are more adaptable, to ensure that they are creative, they can solve their problems and sustain the challenges that we are facing amongst others. In learning the lessons from COVID-19 crisis, it is also important for the profession to conduct thorough research to be able to identify what worked and develop evidence-based solutions for the future, for our schools and also for our classrooms. This should be complemented, obviously, by practitioner-based research that is pivotal for informing theory from practice, rather than always depending on research from academics and, and professors and, and, and a whole lot of other experts. We can rely on the evidence and, and practice that is coming from our schools and inform future planning, inform our public policy, making decisions and also a whole lot of other issues. To our esteemed uh, school and office-based educators, SAIS owes a debt of gratitude to you all for showing leadership, professional responsibility, duty of care, and altruistic motivation during 2020. And that is when the, the, the education system was hard hit by this COVID-19. Through your leadership and foresight, we can indeed attest that educators build the nation and educators enable teaching and learning. On behalf of the SAIS Council and also the TASK team, we are saying to you all, Happy World Teachers Day and SAIS values you all. Thank you very much.